Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and I still haven't sorted out that distributor issue yet, so uh, I'm gonna move on to things that I can control. So what I can control is I can do some painting, and uh, I've still got the stuff that I primed a couple of weeks ago that's sitting in the back of the booth. So um, it's time to get the wing off of the back of the 680, get the 911 out of the booth, and then do something that you all love and you know I love, sanding. Right, so I'm gonna go through this the same as I've done with everything else. Um, in this case, I'm gonna go through and do all the black first, then um, go through and do all the gunmetal parts, and then I'll clear all the parts together. So um, let's mix up some black. Okay, that's all painted up now, and it's looking pretty reasonable. Um, there's a little, few little bits of dust and stuff in here, but it's nothing too crazy. The only uh, real issue I have noticed is on this steering wheel, there's a run just there. Unfortunately, that's the way, <laughs> that's the way it rolls, but that's easy enough to tidy up. But the rest is all looking really good. Okay, so I'll let that paint to set up and I'll move back over here and I thought I would just have a bit of a talk about uh, where I'm at with the distributor and uh, that sort of thing on this car and trying to get it to actually start. So um, basically, you saw me last week playing around trying to get the car to start and there was no spark at all. And I thought I'd just go through quickly exactly how the distributor and the coil and everything all work together because I didn't actually understand it uh, properly until uh, just recently and most of you probably uh, know exactly what's going on and this is sucking eggs but um, basically this is the old style of distributor and it obviously as you uh, drive the engine it spins around and the the points that are inside there they open and close like this and I was always under the impression that um, every time the points closed that's when there was a spark sent to the engine you know it like every electrical contact you've ever worked with, as soon as they touch, that sends the, uh, the power to the spark plug. And that is actually not what happens. What I didn't realize is exactly how these coils work. So inside this coil, there are essentially two coils. There's an outer coil and an inner coil. And you just send 12 volts to the outer coil uh, positive and negative and it charges up the outer coil and that charge then energizes the center coil and as long as there's charge there the charge in the center coil builds up and stays in there as soon as you drop the charge from the coil the center charge from the middle coil sends out as a spark and it's released that's how it works so actually as the distributor goes around every time it opens up it stops sending power to that outer coil and sends a spark through your spark plug, leads through to your spark plug. And that's how it works. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna double check that this coil is right. Uh, a lot of people 
A lot of you were asking me whether this coil was uh, good and thought this could be the issue, and it may be, but it is brand new. So I'm assuming that it's good, but uh, let's just double check that. And an easy way to check it is actually attach a normal spark plug to the top of the coil. And instead of having the distributor which sends it the spark to multiple different spark plugs, we can just directly connect a spark plug up here, connect power to the outside of the coil, and when I let go of the power, the spark plug should spark. That's the theory, so let's try it out. Okay, so I'm getting nothing from the coil. That is really odd. So um, time to dig a little deeper and see what's going on there. Maybe I don't have a good enough ground to the, uh, to the coil itself. So I'll just try and add a better ground and maybe that's my problem. Well, I've directly connected up the, uh, the ground to the negative side of the coil and power to the positive side and a still no spark. So it looks like my coil is toast. It could be uh, the fact that I've messed around with it and probably got the polarity wrong and stuff like that. So I probably cooked it. Um, so one of the things I definitely need is at least a new coil. And um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll have to try again from there. That was a quick trip down to Super Cheap. I got myself another, uh, I got myself a new coil. This one, I believe is the correct coil. It is for, uh, says for electronic ignition distributor. Uh, do not use with an external resistor. I'm not using the external resistor with this, so I'm pretty sure this is the right coil. So let's swap this in and then see if we still don't have any spark. So after my big spiel about how coils work, um, I couldn't get this one to work either. And uh, what I was doing wrong, and I've, I've realized now, is I should have constant uh, positive going to the positive side of the coil and actually alternate the, uh, the ground in. And uh, that then created a spark from my spark plug, so it is working. That's a relief. So now I'm gonna swap this in and um, I'll try again and see if my distributor is working, but I still think the igniter is probably toast, but uh, let's give it a go anyway. Well, at least I've established that the coil's working. It's still not starting. Um, I'll delve into it a bit further later on, but uh, for now, I'm gonna move on to something that's a little less frustrating than wiring. And I might see if I can stick the door locks all in. So that was way more messing around and, uh, and sort of twisting my arm into horrible places and trying to wrestle with bits and pieces that I've half bolted on and unbolting things. And just to get the, uh, the, the door lock in, the door lock is in, but um, for some reason it's quite tight at the moment. I have to uh, have a look at the lock mechanism and see why it's not locking. It's really frustrating. Uh, I've, <laughs> I've ran out of patience for today, so... Um, that means it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff.
Hi guys. Probably the most ingenious cheat of all time was done by Toyota in the 1995 World Rally Championship. This was well after the era of the monstrous Group B cars and the FIA imposed all the turbo WRC cars run a 34mm restrictor to keep the cars slower and safer. The scrutineers knew all of the sorts of things to look for and they inspected the restrictors Toyota was using and they passed them without a second thought. The brilliant thing about Toyota's restrictor was that when it was removed for inspection it completely complied. The act of clamping it down onto the turbo caused the centre section to slide 4 to 5 millimetres, opening up extra air passages and allowing up to 25% more airflow. That could be worth around a 50 horsepower increase in cars that were normally around 300 horsepower. Obviously that's a huge advantage. It is not clear how they got caught, some believe it was a whistleblower, but they were banned for the rest of the 95 and 96 seasons. Okay guys, back again with another episode of Mail Time. So um, let's have a look what we got. Aha! That is fantastic. This is from Rob White and the guys from A to Z Auto Parts in Brisbane who were watching me struggle with the uh, distributor and um, they've actually sent me a new igniter for the distributor and this is what is more than likely gone wrong with my distributor is this thing is cooked it's quite common apparently with those uh, those distributors and um yeah they've uh, they've sent it through so thank you very much rob and uh uh a to z auto parts in brisbane apparently they're a little uh independent uh part shop getting uh, all sorts of parts for European Japanese cars and stuff and I know Rob knows a lot about old Z so uh, if you need some uh, old Z parts it sounds like they're the ones to get them. This is going to be very handy and hopefully will get me running next week. Yeah! So I didn't get as much done this week as I'd hoped. I did get the painting done and uh, sort of it's a bit frustrating but uh, frustrating yes. Now I have that new igniter hopefully on Tuesday's episode, I should get it started. That is my that is my sole focus is to get the car started. Not me. Hmm. I mean, I'm not as focused. You should be. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> I really want to get see this thing running. So um, it'd just be really nice. I mean, we had the, the beetle, but it'd be just great to actually get a car that's going. It's that's, going to be great. That is, that is exciting. So stay it's tuned close. and yep. if everything crossed. It'll happen. Yep. Next so. Week. Remember to see the videos a day earlier than everyone else. Um, join our Patreon and uh, help us out. And um, I hope you're enjoying it. If you are, please like, subscribe. Uh, Facebook, awesome. Instagram, T-shirts for merch. sale. Who doesn't want one of these? A Jeff. <laughs> see you guys. No, it wasn't. Don't, don't. Every time you say that, and then it takes me like 10 minutes to do the next line. So don't jinx me. Tool pro. Oh, it's got like a pea coat on it. Shut up. <laughs> For the rest of the 95 and it's not. <laughs> that doesn't make sense.